I love that. Rest and recovery and f all of that. Continue to the maximum. Yeah, but first a quick word from our sponsor. Right. Oh, how goes it, YouTube? I'm up here in Canada drinking maple syrup and playing some puck out back with my buddies. And don't get it twisted. We're playing hard-nosed puck back here. I don't care if I get sent to the box because I'm going to pull your sweater up over your bucky and bundle you, pal. Guys, guys, I'm just kidding. I'm still here in the United States, but my internet service provider doesn't know this. That's because I'm using Atlas VPN. With Atlas VPN, I can unlock my favorite Netflix shows and movies like Community and Happy Gilmore by making them think I'm in America's hat. Silly internet provider will never know. And Atlas VPN is more than just a VPN. It blocks all the malicious links, ads, and trackers and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Looking for something on Google? With Atlas VPN, you can search the web with real organic search results and do it without tracking your activity. This is the best VPN deal in the market. Enjoy the most affordable online protection for just $1.99 per month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Best of all, Atlas VPN protects all your devices with a single subscription. So go to the link in the description or go to get.atlasvpn.com slash Zach Tellender. Get yourself this Atlas VPN, because it's not that bad up here in Canada, eh? Hey! No! Stop! Just calm down! Don't do it! All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to look at the finest weightlifting team in history, and that is the Bulgarian weightlifting team. A lot of people may know the term Bulgarian lifting. Uh, it took off, I want to say, like in the early 2000s, you know... Uh, bodybuilding.com forums and, you know, teen nation, stuff like that. They kind of bastardized the term Bulgarian training. And all that really means is like building to a heavy single every day and then maybe doing some drop sets. Um, but the idea is that the muscle recruitment and the neural ability to gain proprioception from doing one rep maximums was actually beneficial. And it is to a certain degree. But it's not Bulgarian training because Bulgarian training, as it pertains to the weightlifting team, which it does, is the only Bulgarian training. And you'll see what I mean. I think it was 1968 or 69 that he became national coach of the Bulgarian weightlifting team. And he was not well known. I think nobody respected him outside these countries. So he's talking about the legendary coach Ivan Abijayev. Um, you guys will learn more about his his style, uh, if you will. But a great video for this is Max Ada's uh, Bulgarian video on, on Bulgarian system of training, um, because Max, uh, you know, trained with the guy. He it's a really interesting story. Max always told me, you know, he would drive like two three hours per day just to train with Ivan Abijayev, and uh, it was hard. It was very tough. Like the, the short, compact version of it is maxing snatch, clean and jerk, and front squat, maybe a pull, uh, three times a day, every single day. One day off, I think, actually. You get Sunday off. Um, but yeah, that's what he did. That's what Ivan Abajev did, and that's what made the Bulgarian weightlifting th team what it did, um, as well as, you know, grandpa's cough medicine, if you know what I'm talking about. He was one of many, many coaches. No special ideas. And following, at this time, the Russian training system. But he could show his quality. He made an analysis. And he mixed this very famous Russian system with his own ideas. And suddenly, this was 
what could be the secret of such performances? And I've had this question to myself. I was studying it. And then I was, I found out there must be something behind this. Okay, so uh, just as a preface, you know, he, he, Abedjev, he knows the Russian system of training and he wanted to change it and, and tweak it a little bit. But I think one part in there that is most important um, is that there was this communication style with his athletes. And what you got in Russia was, you know, you're doing it for country. That's what competing at the Olympics are. You, you're doing it for country. And... Um, I think in Bulgaria, they took that even further, right? Like they narrowed it down so much that they were like, this is everything. And if you don't want to be here, go back to working in the factories because we don't care. We'll just pull up another kid. And maybe they were doing this in Russia, but maybe it wasn't as as deep as the way that Ivan Abedjev was doing it. Um, let's keep going. Let's see, why didn't you sleep last night? Find ways to calm your sleep down. Everything that hampers you has to be arranged for. Easy, you're not hampering. You're going to see a lot of yelling during the first pulls. I've been a competitor and I have lived through the before game fever. Now, as I coach, I do the same. I must tell you that there is and there isn't a difference. It's different to get asleep, especially the night before a competition. Sevdalin Marinov is always the first competitor who enters the fight in our team. We knew there were two strong Chinese competitors and the fact that USSR was competing too, we knew they never let weak competitors appear. That's why we have the aim to prepare the first competitor in such a way that he must at all costs become first. Hold. Hold yourself. So that's a, a term that you'll hear a lot. It's like, dirishet, dirishet, dirishet. Um, hopefully I'm, I'm doing it right, but that's just hold, hold, hold. And you'll hear it a lot from, from Russian lifters, but I, I, I'm, I'm sensing it here in Bulgarian as well. I don't know. Dirishetti. I'm look, I don't know too much about Eastern European languages and linguistics. I just hear digit, digit, digit all the time when I'm watching these uh, lifts. But yes, Marinov being 52 kilos. OK, um, and I think in this documentary, it's called School of Champions. They show his cut during for this and it just looks brutal. The, the, you'll notice that these guys are not happy. <laughs> The Bulgarian team is just not happy. Gotovsky won over Marino in the first movement, but I knew that Gotovsky is weaker at the second. So he's talking about the snatch and the clean and jerk there. So You're ready to go out? The Russian beat him ready? in the snatch, but Come he can on. beat him in the clean and jerk. I love that. Okay, so I love when coaches sniff the f ammonia. It's like... Ivan Abedjev was notorious for this. He would like give it to his lifters to sniff before they walk out on stage. And then he would take it himself, just like a psycho, this guy. Come on, fast. Hi. Hold it, hold it. 145 at 52. Always the stronger competitor acts repressingly on the adversary. 
Uh, that's David Rigert right here. You can see him. I think at this time he's probably already coaching. It looks like he's already coaching. So you guys can see in the jumpsuit here. Um, Alex, please put up the picture of the, the famous picture of him like this. All right. David Rigert, I would say, is like close to the Arnold of weightlifting. And this dude was like, I heard he was the total, he was like a total ladies man in Russia. Just an absolute pimp. Uh, Nelko felt weaker the competition. At the very start, he had the information he'd lose. So that's uh, Leonid Ternenko uh, with, you know, this is one of the strongest weightlifters of all time. The famous, the ever famous Leonid Ternenko. And that's why he was nervous. Some kind of information is being transmitted, maybe telepathically, but competitors figure out well who's stronger. Just by looking at each other, by the expression of the eyes, through the behavior, they feel the perception who's stronger. Krastev with 212 and a half. Um, Antonio Krastev was snatching weights back then that were damn near untouchable for a long time. I think Hossein Rezazadeh was like the first guy to break Krastev's record, right? So like 212 and a half was just massive back then. I mean, it's still massive. Like we're just, I'm so clouded by Lasha. <laughs> you guys understand like Lasha, Lasha snatched 225 and he like has not snatched under 215 in years. It's, it is a wild world we're living in where like, I can be like, oh yeah, 212, it's just kind of whatever. It's massive, okay? Okay, so I don't know, there is a, there's an Iron Mind video of uh, it's called Unbelievable Bulgarians. And, and this is like the Bulgarian trend had just started here. This is like not maybe not the prime because there are some later actors in the uh, Bulgarian saga. Um, but the, the training hall there was like brand spanking new and it was it was in Sofia. And I'm wondering if it's in the same place in this video, but it's a pretty damn good training hall here. You train with greatest and pleasure on Mondays, first half day. So this Saturday, Sunday must be settled with. It appears to be, the day off appears to be the most tiresome. You have most complaints. You feel worse following Sunday, sad, tired, exhausted, injured, <coughs> feeling the pain here and there. And I'll settle with this problem if that happens on Mondays. Continue to the maximum. That's it. That right there. Continue to the maximum. That's it. F your pain, your tiredness, whatever you feel and continue to the maximum. It's interesting, you know, in an age where we talk so much about RPE and uh, rest and recovery and, you know, all these different hormone levels and uh, optimizing program. And this guy just said, fuck all of that. Continue to maximum. Um, yeah. And like this, this is this is what I gained a lot from from this documentary is is that um, Ivan Abajayev is constantly like preaching. He's not just speaking to his athletes, he's like preaching. He's like a dictator and he's just constantly preaching this message just over and over again. And a lot of times the guys are just like, it's like, how excited can you be? You know, you're, you have no idea how many sessions you've done, how many times you've maxed out at this point. And your coach is speaking yet again, just to kind of hear his own voice. I, who, who knows if this helps, who knows if this works? But this was, you know, where Bulgaria was starting to become successful. And this was one of the patterns that, you know, you'll see throughout. We train, train and all over. 
But always something crops up, something to work upon. If a casual person watches us, he would say, they should be happy with their success. They will see that he can't completely be satisfied with what he's done. There will always be something small, unimportant, but because uh, this unimportant bit depends a lot. Today I had a pain in the, my knee and told the Bajiv, uh, but he said to me, suppress the pain as much as you can in train. With all lots of such pains, we can't just live like that and sit and watch because of the pain. Just pushing his athletes. How many times I've just been sick and tired of lifting at all. Don't want to touch the barbell. Can't say I'm lazy. So what that shouldn't be ever said. Not laziness, it's just a disgust towards the barbell. It's a tiredness which don't let the muscles... Look at how miserable they are, man. Your mind doesn't let you. It puts you on the bench and says to you, no, don't, don't go. The training does not tire me that much. There is the psychological pressure. The difficult thing is that our sport is dull. Not like cycling. They say we pedal all day. They do, but they see the landscape, they see trees. So this is something that Max always said to me. Um, he said this is it's a, it's like banging your head against the wall. Like there's there's a wall right there, and if you bang your head enough times, you're gonna chip away enough layers to where you'll be able to step through the wall. And that's like your competition and you know, having some sort of competition lift. These guys are in this room snatching, clean and jerking so often and so much that it's breaking them psychologically. And it's just an incredible thing to show here. And, and something that he's saying here is like, you know, at least when you cycle, you get to see the landscape. At least there's something refreshing about it and new about it every time. Um, but I will say this. I used to swim when I was little. I think that psychologically is one of the worst sports I've ever, ever been a part of. And I, I honestly, God, don't know how a teenager goes into hard training. You can't speak to anyone because you're underwater. Not that you could speak to anyone while you're cycling, I guess, or while you're training hard, but um, you're just looking at floor tiles all day, right? At least in this, you can rest, you can look, you might be able to talk to somebody. Maybe you're too tired to even talk to somebody, but... You have that opportunity. In uh, in swimming, man, it was awful. Just staring at the floor, doing repeats and dying. Bushes. Well, with us, it's all the same. The hole, the barbell, the resting bench, and that's it. We simply look for ways somehow to make our good humor Come. so that we can start working harder. That's something I can say is the hardest to make good human come. Oh. But the way one looks at training takes a long time. You're here, here. For a long time he hasn't concentrated. We tried with light weights and now he can't. 
Let's see now. I'll change my place. Hope he'll do it when I'm at another place. Starting to add a bit of superstition. I mean, guys, it, it just like, I don't know. It's got to absolutely. I don't know how you could get excited for any training. So, so here he's he's not even close. He like he's not even close to making it. I did. Later I'll lift the hundred seventy five. As you work, you won't be able to reach this base you aim at, at least for 185. But 185 is a good job. You know that you can come out of it. You can do it. But someone must tell you to wind you up, just like I did now. Well, not all training should be like that. But even if I are like that, that doesn't mean that it's a trading process of the future. But at least there should be a few such trainings in a week. Although the camp is year-round, we have days off. Wednesday from 6.30 till 10.30. Saturdays we can be absent all night. We sleep home. That's our three hours. Okay, so Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 10.30, and then Saturdays all day off. So, like, when, when they say, like, free time, right, Wednesday, 6.30 to 10.30, that's four hours where they're not training. But basically, they train all day. Basically. If they're not eating, they're training or sleeping. Like, literally. And then on Saturdays, they get time off. During the week, and Sunday afternoon as well. And we're going groups. Our team is divided in two, married and not married. The married ones go home, the bachelors wander around the coffee bars. Usually before big events, we do control competitions, kind of small tournaments. There are, let's say, seven or eight such controls before European or World Championships. And at the end, when these controls finish, and usually in the categories, there are two or three athletes. We choose the one who has won more times at control competitions. Okay. So they, I, was gonna, I was wondering what the purpose of that many controls are, but they add up the points and then they determine who they're going to take because they just want to win. Like they, they don't even care about being second or third. It's, it, it's one or nothing. So what they're doing with these controls is then determining who's going to go. Um, but what I was thinking was like kind of it, it's the, the idea. Another thing Max was telling me um, was that we are going to train and make training so difficult that competition feels easy. And, um, you know, that's what you see a lot of times with the champions in, in many different sports. I, I was just, you know, thinking like if the controls are so often, how could you possibly possibly be excited for the meet and do something that you can't you ex you don't really expect that you can do. Um, but they are working on the complete opposite side here. They are working on the idea of been there, done that by the time we get to the meet. We have problems with our weight. We have two kilos or more. In the morning we go to the sauna, only sauna. Enough, doctor, enough. Oh my God. The depth of that. And, and you know, like the to the doctor, the team doctor that everyone has like ro rolling around with them. That is their pharmacologist. That is their guy that is giving them the drugs. Um, I wish I knew what the protocol was. 
Uh, but there are some there's some diaries or some stuff that um, has been written by Bulgarians. One was Valentin Hristov, who said that um, when he was picked up to be on the, the team, he went, I think he snatched 160 and clean and jerked like 190 kilos, which is very good for a, you know, 20 year old, uh, 94 kilo or 95. I don't know what the weight class was back then. Um, he might have even been heavier, come to think of it. But after I think it was like three months of training, his snatch went up to like 180. Clean and jerk went well past 200. And then at some point, about a year later, he was doing uh, I think like 190 or or 200 and 250 in training. So yes, the the drugs makes a huge difference, uh, and they were using a lot of them. But that doesn't take away from the fact that they were training more than anyone in history. Please wind yourself up. I'll be okay. What is that? It's probably just like a sports drink or something. I don't know. This time, don't worry. What is that? Is that 50? Is that 150? It's at least 145, I think. Maybe maybe 149. Crazy. One seventy five. It's all a fact. Last try for Stefan Tapurov. That mustache, man. Congratulations for your first. Man, these guys are going to be happy for for a couple hours, man. Petrov. All these guys are legendary names, man. 155. Jesus Christ. He was convinced to win, but the world record too. 200 and a half. insane it's 67 and a half body weight he's going uh 355 and a half did you see the ease with which Mikhail Petrov 355 and a half dude we can only regret he couldn't do world record in the total these numbers are ridiculous they're simply ridiculous I don't know what Krastev does here. And Tony is on the platform. If he succeeds, he'll be first in the snatch. There'll so he's doing at least 15 record. here. At least 215. Two hundred sixteen. Massive. Massive. And that stood for a long, long time. Okay? I, th I believe that it's that one that stood a long time until Hossein Rezazadeh. Where? Come on, hi. 
Lots of people ask me they're cowards if they're scared. Some say that I don't get scared, that I'm not afraid. They lie. Everybody's scared. But the difference is that some, although they're afraid, they go to dangers and overcome fear. Others give up. In this respect, I'm afraid too, but I think I can overcome it. We still go to European World Championship. Although we're afraid, that's it. I go there no matter what expects me. Pretty cool little speech at the end there. Uh, you know, everyone's everyone's afraid. But some people are afraid and they go towards the danger and other people, they run away or they give up. Uh, it's definitely a lesson to be learned, but I, I hope you guys maybe gain some knowledge. And if you want to check that documentary out, it's called School of Champions. I believe it's free on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.